But writer Gina Kim has dedicated herself to the cause of volunteering for Bellevue Hospital's Rape Crisis Program, and now she has written her first play titled Miss Kim, which is premiering in the New York International Fringe Festival and will be donating partial proceeds to Safe Horizon. And welcome, 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 Gina. Thank you. And uh, okay, so we were we were just discussing. Um, let's share a little bit about Arias uh, because Arias is a, an organization that you founded, but it no longer exists. But actually, inspired you to keep going forward, which is how you develop this script in which uh, is being presented at the New York uh, Fringe Festival. Yes, absolutely. What would you like to know? Just how Aria began? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Aria is an organization called Awareness of Rape and Incest through Art that I founded I, in two. 2004 and basically this is after a period of my life where I was in really really serious depression and after coming out of that um, I did some transformational work and what it was that I wanted to do was give back to the community and I found that sharing and expression is what really pulled me through so I founded this program within another program to do a community project how to make an impact in your community and so the, the vision of it originally was just to put on a show for survivors of sexual abuse to have a place where they can express through art, whether it was through story, dance, art, visual, or performance. Mm -hmm. And then what it turned out was there was just all these complications. I said, you know what, the heck with it. I'm just going to start a nonprofit. So I made hundreds of calls to people, and that's kind of where it birthed from that point. Okay. And so, and so, uh, was this a center or a place that women who were abused or, or persons? I yeah. really shouldn't just gear it towards women, right. but however, these men sexual, and women, right, right, right. right. Um, is was this a, a place, a safe place for for people to come to? Absolutely, there was no center. It, literally, right out of my home, what I did was I produced shows. So I would put out ads and a lot, surprisingly a lot of people responded to it. And I put on two shows, uh, auctions and things of that sort, where I brought together a community of survivors who were actually willing to share their story on stage. So essentially I just pretty much directed and produced shows where these where people. these people would be able to actually use it as a form of therapy. Exactly, and I made it a safe place. I always made sure I had therapists in the audience to take care of all the people who were participating. Okay. So very then, and how long was that? Uh, how that long was, did you do that? For two years. For two years, and now you've written your own play. I have. And the name of the play is called Miss Kim, by the way. Miss yes. Kim is the name of the play. Yes, and... Um, I'm very happy to say that it opens tonight, so it's exciting to be on this show right now. Nice, um, congratulations. Only, thank you, in several hours. The uh, New York International Fringe Festival is a big deal. It is huge. It's, it's a huge. very big deal, and this is your first script going out? My first script, I, I made a declaration last year. I said I will be in the New York International Fringe Festival. I didn't know if I was going to make it in, but I just declared it. And I got my acceptance lever letter on April 26th, and there it was. I'm in. Nice. Yes, and we're sold out tonight. Beautiful. Even yeah. better. Yes. I mean, I'm sorry, people. <laughs> I mean, it's not good for you. However, is yeah. it running a couple of times? I'm yeah. sure it's running a couple yes. of times. We have five shows, and uh, tonight's the first show. We have a show on Tuesday night and April 17th, April 22nd, 24th, and the 27th. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, give us a little synopsis of, of, of Miss Kim. Miss Kim basically is a true story. It's my life. And the original. Wow, that's yeah. brave. <laughs> yeah. That's brave. Yeah, so I actually reenact um, some of my abuses in my life. Like one is a, a date rape. Um, I have Christy Candler, who is in Wicked. Actually, she. I'm honored to have her in my cast. She will be playing my the rape that happen with a stranger at Knife Point. I have, I have five actors literally playing about 20 to 30 different characters of my life. And wow. I play myself. Wow. Through the show. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. So uh, let's just say someone who is a survivor of uh, this type of abuse comes to see the show. What will they get from it? What they'll get is... Uh, truth okay and we I was very very insistent on writing a piece that wasn't in your face but it was very artistically done and to, to bring out the humor 
of what really helped me survive through everything that I've been through in my life. So there's a lot of humor in this play, really? surprisingly. That's great. That's great. So you're not coming just to see abuse. I mean, you, you will come to laugh and cry. Okay, so yeah. just to share with the audience, because yes. um, I, I totally get the comedic aspect yeah. or of finding humor in, you know, what you create as your story. Right. And um, in, in, like, obviously there being uh, issues that needed to be confronted and uh, you putting it down on paper and now sharing it with the public making it humorous it sounds kind of like contradicting so yeah. like what what's humorous in in the the actual production um the humor comes in all of the journey after with all the people that i encounter in my life mm -hmm. so uh, through my experience of dating just different people that come into my life and how they react to what it is that i have to say to them and that was the only way really to survive through all of it was to see humor in it because we're, just, we're human. At the end of the day, we're all human. Not everyone can connect to this cause or to the story. So how was I going to find my way out of all of that? Interesting. And so it was through humor that I did it. Um, the way the story was written, though, I couldn't have accomplished it on my own because it's a very personal, personal story. I do have a co-writer named Ryan Toffel. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to acknowledge him for keeping the story true. Nice. And really, really capturing the essence of who I am. Because if it was just left to me, I would have made it pretty. Right. And I would have taken out really the rawness of it. Right. And I think what the audience will really get to see is what someone really thinks. I mean, I mince nothing. It's really truthful. Um, How it, long is the show? It's an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Yes. You have an intermission. There's no intermission, but There's no intermission. They gotta go through the whole journey. <laughs> One shot. One shot. It's like, but it goes ooh, fast. Take your dose. <laughs> yes, and we let you breathe. Okay. We we have we, you know, put moments of the piece where you can breathe. So you'll laugh and then you'll breathe and then you'll be. <gasps> You might choke for a minute, and then we'll put you right back into laughter. Name some of the actors. You said you had a whole bunch of actors. Yeah. Different roles. Name them. Uh, we have Christy Candler. Mm -hmm. She was uh, Nessa Rose in the Broadway show Wicked. I have Matthew McCurdy. He's done some film. Justin Gentry, uh, Tessa Fay. She was in Electric Company on television, and Ryan Tofel, my co-writer. Directed by Matthew Corzine, who directed a show last year in the Fringe, The Boys Upstairs, won the Encore series, and produced by Sarah Labonte. I have a very big team. You sure do. Uh, we uh, are like really honored to have you here sharing this story and uh, applaud you in, in your bravery. Yes, no, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. And um, I do just want to acknowledge one more person, uh, company, organization, Grassroots, is the Stop Abuse Campaign, founded by Andrew Willis. Mm -hmm. I've actually partnered with them, and they will be on the streets for me, marketing Miss Kim. Nice. And also, if someone who is who's a, an abuse survivor... Yes. Um, lost, doesn't know where to go, uh, based on your research and uh, being involved, where would they go? Well, that's, that's a good question. There's so many different places to go. There's hotlines. Safe Horizon is a great place to go to. Um, then each state has their own alliance. For New York, I think one of the greatest organizations is the New York City Alliance Against Sexual Assault. I did an incest survivor group at Mount Sinai Savvy, which is sexual assault um, violence intervention program. Mm -hmm. There are so many great programs in the city that are free that you can uh, be a part of if you want to do a group or if you just need help. And hopefully, I'll be able to bring my organization back up and right. Be well, a you know, I, what you're doing is a great contribution to our society. And just in case you guys don't know, Miss Kim, uh, some of the proceeds are actually going to Safe Horizon, which is one of the organizations she mentioned. And uh, once again, we want to thank you, thank Gina, you. for being with us. And congratulations on being sold out this evening. Yes, we thank love you. that. Thank you. And once again, if you could just share with everyone the uh, where they can obtain the uh, rest of the dates that uh, oh. the show will be uh, premiering at the New York International Fringe Festival. Absolutely. Uh, I'd love for you to come see the show. You can come visit the website at www.misskimtheplay.com, which is M-I-S-S-K-I-M, theplay.com. All the show dates are there, and it's at the Players Theater in New York City in Manhattan on 115 McDougal Street. Thank you. Thank you.